Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. My name is Kevin and today is Tuesday and today we are going to talk about how to study for the quantitative section of the GMAT. So the things you should do, big picture kind of stuff, to help you prepare for uh, the quantitative section. So let's dive right in. Um, one of the first things you should do, maybe super obvious, but I'm going to say it anyways, is you need to learn about the structure of the quantitative section. Um, so you should know like how many questions are in the section. Does anybody know? 37. Excellent. Um, you should know it's 75 minutes long. You should know that it's going to be a computer adaptive, like the verbal section. Um, you should know the types of questions you're going to have in there. So there's going to be problem solving questions and data sufficiency questions. You should know about those questions and how to approach them and the intricacies that are involved with them. Um, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you should have some vague idea, but if you don't, problem solving are just multiple choice questions. You have five options. Data sufficiency are very unique and things that you want to definitely, um, there's a specific strategy that you definitely want to know uh, to approach those, prop, that, those types of problems. Um, also, you should know, before I move on, <laughs> that there's no calculator, um, and that's gonna inform a lot of your preparation. Also, you should know the content of the quantitative section. So what concepts are going to be tested? Um, so they're gonna test you, um, on algebraic concepts, uh, arithmetic concepts, geometry, and then what they call word problems, which are like rate problems or mixture problems, um, interest problems. Um, and so really get to know those concepts. If you have the official guide, there's a math review section in it that goes through all the concepts that are testable in the GMAT. So you really should know those as well. Um, there is also it's a good idea to know where to focus. So um, there are high frequency concepts on the test. For example, like percents. Percents are a type of question that are asked a lot. Also, um, linear, linear equations is another popular uh, concept to be tested. Ratios and proportions, another popular concept to be tested. So you really want to focus your time on those concepts. Um, if you're curious about what the frequency of these concepts are, I'll put a link down below the video, and we have a whole blog post dedicated to the frequency of all these concepts, and you can see uh, where it really matters to focus your time. Um, okay, now talking more about your preparation. When it comes to math, Mike McGeary likes to say it is not for spectators. Math is not a spectator sport. You can't just read about the concepts. You can't just watch videos about math like you're doing right now. You actually have to dive in and do math. Um, that's really all there is to it. You got to uh, bathe yourself in math. Do as much math as you can. Do mental math all the time. Um, you know, try to calculate tax on different items when you're in the store. Um, try to calculate the distance to the grocery store. Um, try to convert miles into feet. Try to figure out how many miles per hour you're going in miles per feet. So just do as much mental math as you can. Um, the more that you can uh, m make it a part of your daily life and something that you're comfortable with, the easier the GMAT is going to be. The concepts on the math portion of the test really are uh, testing your critical thinking skills as much as your math skills. And the more that you can do math sort of, excuse me, so the more that math is second nature for you, the easier it's going to be to deal with the higher level concepts and the critical aspects of the questions. Because you're really going to have to grapple with a lot of things and then just do the math. Um, and that is uh, why it's important to know that there's no calculator. And it's also important because there's a timer and you don't have all day to spend on these questions. Finally, uh, this leads into math strategies. Um, so there's lots of strategies out there. I'm going to put links below to a lot of these concepts. Um, but knowing, some, knowing how to estimate well, um, knowing the doubling and having, having tricks, um, there's lots of math strategies out there that are going to save you time and help you on the test. Um, the more of these you know, uh, the better prepared you're going to be. And again, I, like I said, you really need to have a strong math foundation, sort of know these concepts inside and out, so you can start um, 
thinking about the more critical aspects of the questions. All right, those are sort of the general basics of preparing for the GMAT quantitative section. There's definitely a lot more to it. Um, this was just sort of coming at it from a very high level um, to give you some things to think about. But if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer and respond to them, um, either in a comment form or in a video form, if you're lucky. Um, all right, be excellent to the universe, and I will see you next Tuesday.